My name is Brianna, and I welcome you to the Tales of Adventure, a D&D podcast like no other. I realize I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Estrada. Well, Estrada, I'm I'm Sintri. How are you doing today? I'm doing rather well. You you wouldn't have been to be the Sintri who works as a blacksmith nearby. I uh, a few streets down and uh, here in Neverwinter. Um, of course, that was a long time ago. I've uh, I've definitely gotten into more fulfilling career prospects. I was asking around because I had some items in need of repair. A friend told me about you, but also mentioned that, like you said, you have moved on from other things. I also heard you were a cleric. Is that true? I, uh, Forge Father of Moradrin. I got my studies at, back home in Mithril Hall uh, before I moved out here to um, Helm's Hold, just, uh, just down the road there. So you're a blacksmith and a cleric. What led you to become both of those? Well, the faith of Moradrin, the two aren't exactly unrelated. With the all with the all forge, he brought the dwarves into the world through his forge, through the hammering of his anvil and the sparks that fell from the molten metals that he crafted into the legendary artifacts that you hear about in song. So for us to praise Moradrin and worship him and spread his stories to do that in our in our forges, on our anvils and in our works it's it's one and the same really that is true I've met some dwarves on my journey sorry it's just been a very long day when you travel a lot you sometimes forget things I am uh, definitely becoming a lot more accustomed to the weary uh, tolls of adventuring it wasn't wasn't something I pursued in my youth, but ever since meet and to, uh, Tom and Erin, it's it's become a lot more a lot more prevalent in my lifestyle. I understand that feeling. Not many are born wanting to become adventurers. Sometimes it just happens. You either realize it when you're older, or, or sometimes you aren't given much of a choice. Hey, it's a uh... It's a sad story that I've heard one too many times. My kids, Tom and Erin, they were, uh, they were definitely forced into this life. They, uh, they neither of them chose this road, and I, I don't, I, I can't imagine the kind of person that would. Honestly, it's, uh, it's a rough life. It's hard, but the rewards are worth it. You, you meet, you meet the kind of people that it's brought into my life, and uh, you putting into threats and. If you're lucky, you live long enough to hear your name woven into the songs of the bards. It is true, although I find oftentimes the songs of the bards embellish things a little. That's why whenever I hear a story, I like to chase down to the truth, see what really happened that day. If you want to hear good embellishing, make your way up to Sittlestone, the tribe of the El- or the tribe of the elk, best braggers I've ever met in my life. The the way they introduce each other or themselves, rather, is they go on these long, wild tangents about all the accomplishments that they've made, trying to outdo whoever they happen to be talking to. Whoever wins gets a free round of drinks and the respect of everyone who happens to be in the drinking hall. I've been to Settlestone. It's been some time, but when, when were you there? The last time I was in Settlestone was about... I want to say... Three, four months ago, there was um, there was rumors that the dark elves of Menza Baranzan were trying to give life to their spider goddess Loth or whatever the or whatever her name was. So, uh, my daughter Erin, she befriended um, a rather famous drow, and he took her down and showed her the city. We we interrupted the ritual, fought our way out. But unfortunately, we didn't quite stop it in time. We ended up having to fight that that goddess 
anyway, but fortunately it was a, uh, she wasn't quite able to gather her full strength. She manifested and brought her hordes of demonic entities with her, and we fought her, we fought her on the, on the hills of Mithril Hall, and landed the, the blow that disincorporated her and sent her back to the spiderweb pits. I heard about that, and didn't realize you had anything to do with it. I I was standing right next to everyone involved. It was me, Tom, Aaron. I can't remember if Dritz was there or not. Sorry, my my recollections of those exact events are a, a bit uh, a bit fuzzy. After we after we won the battle on the hills, we felt a shake underneath the mountain. Went back down to investigate, and there were uh, we were still tired from the battle. So when we came across the Baylor. Air two. It did not. It didn't end well for me. Um, I wasn't able to witness the 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 final blow of the battle. I just I remember this explosion and darkness. And then I woke up back in the church of the forge. I was told it was about three days later, and that I had a debt for being brought back to life. That is true. Being brought back to life is not always a cheap thing, but it is a miracle nonetheless. Aye, that is. Uh, fortunately, I was able to mostly repay my debt, working back in my old position as the uh, as the forge father. But when I heard that when I heard that there was a dragon in Waterdeep attacking my daughter, and I couldn't stand idly by, I had to I had to rejoin them. You've mentioned a daughter and a son, but where is your life? Uh, my wife Ingrid, uh, she died a long time ago. I'm, I'm, a, I'm much more seasoned than your average adventurer. Uh, I didn't start doing this till I was already over a hundred years old. Ingrid was, Ingrid was my adventure for a long time. I thought she was, I thought she was all the adventure I would ever see, all the all the adventure I would ever need. We moved out to Helm's Hold uh, about about sixty years ago. Had a child, little Thomas. <clears throat> Excuse, me. sorry. It's uh, it's difficult to talk about. It's all right. Take your time. When Thomas was about twelve years old, barely, barely big enough to hold his own hammer, I went into Neverwinter to get some supplies for our little forge out there. And there was a raid. A warband full of orcs came down, decimated Helm's Hold. Oh no! It didn't leave many survivors, and the ones that were left. They talked of all these horrible things that these orcs did. My wife and son were <clears throat> were not among the living. Every father's worst fear. If it weren't for Dritzt, who was back in Mithril Hall at the time, if it weren't for him coming and finding me in the in the mines in the Undermountain, I would have lost myself in there. I went into the Underdark trying to find solitude to be away from all the pain, all the anger that I was holding within myself, and I had heard of Dritz. I mean, he's a, he's a companion of Mithril Hall, the, the only one still alive. He's he's a legend. Never expected him to to take notice of me, but when when he came into the into the Underdark and and found me, he told me about his story and about how he were lost to this hunter in his in his mind. It gave me hope. He helped me track down that warband and I wasn't able to fight. I was, I was still recovering in ways that adventurers don't often talk about in the stories. My heart and my mind were still broken and Dritz knew that if I fought the horde I'd lose myself to my anger. So he he went out and killed them all by himself. It was a it was a it was a wonderful sight to behold. His his skill with a blade is second to none. I wish I could have seen that myself. Well, maybe if you're lucky, you'll uh, you'll get a chance to meet him. He's a he's a great lad. I very much look forward to getting his story. After that, I went back to Neverwinter and l- lost myself in me work. Became the uh, blacksmith that you've heard about and tried to simultaneously gain renown while keeping a low profile. It's a lot harder than you'd think. <laughs> it sounds rather challenging. And then. <laughs> And then I one day I got a knock on my door. This this half-starved, scrawny little half-elf and this human girl with this chip on her shoulder and this gleam in her eye that it was just it was like she was ready to take on the world. And it just they spoke to me. Back then they, they weren't Tom and Aaron Whiteforge. They were Aaron Guttersnipe and Thomas Shadowhand. I believe I've heard of those names before. Hey. 
If you've heard of Aaron Whiteforge, it's it can't have been anything good. They, uh, or rather, if you've heard of Aaron Guttersnipe, it's a little hard to remember. She used to have a different last name sometimes. From what she's told me about her life before she met me, she was uh, she's quite the quite the feared assassin for the Broken Fang Warband. She worked with them. It's quite impressive. Hey, it was it was not by choice. She was likewise a victim of an orcish raid. They uh, they held sway over her for far too long, and one of these days I'll I'll introduce you to her, and she'll she'll be able to tell you her story. And Thomas, little Tom, he's he's got quite the story as well. His brother was the head of the thieves' guild in Waterdeep, and it's an impressive connection to have. <laughs> he's got quite the he's got quite the story for you too. Oh, sounds like you took these ch- these children in. in. I they weren't that weren't the plan at first. I was just supposed to have them escort me up to Mithril Hall and deliver some goods, but we um we decided to take a shortcut through Neverwinter Wood and ended up in the Feywild. That was uh That's quite a shortcut there. Tricky thing about those Fey, they open up portals when you're not looking for them. Yeah, not the most pleasant experience. Can be. Sometimes, I guess, but Depends on if the fay that opened the portal likes you or not. True. This one, I guess, didn't particularly care for us because we came out and ended up facing these two black dragon hatchlings. They'd be babes, but they were, oh, they were nasty. They were great, cranky, foul little brats. Baby black dragons have a wonderful habit of spitting acid at you when they don't like you. Aye, that they do. Fortunately, they make a nice pair of uh, acid-resistant bracers if you know how to skin them. A fair point. So, once we dealt with them, we had to face... We had to figure out a way out of the Feywild, and Erin, sharp as attack that one, she managed to find clues to this doorway that was through this tree that was alive and dead at the same time, and in into this hag's lair. But she was so surprised to see you. Aye, that she was. Never a good idea to surprise a hag. No, no, it's not. Not when they can bring out the the memories of the ones you've lost. Use it to play tricks on your mind and make you think that you're fighting the people you love the most. Especially when they started off by chucking a frying pan at your head, and the next thing you know, you're facing your dead loved ones, and who are still chucking frying pans at your head. It was that was a weird day. Now that sounds like an adventure and a half. Yeah, it was a very long time ago. It was not intentional and didn't mean to kill the hag. It's just I was traveling with the tinker there and he might have dropped a small explosive vial in her very confined hut. He got out of there right before it imploded. It's just a little messy. <laughs> the stinker wouldn't have happened to be in a gnome, would he? Yes, yes, it was a gnome. They're sneaky and troublesome. Aye, but they've got the most deft hands I've ever seen on anyone other than a dwarf. It might be short, but those those gnomes, they, they can get into places and they can make the finest little clockwork trinkets I've ever seen. They also have a delightful habit of trying to pickpocket you every time they're nearby. I had to start carrying around healing items because I would keep breaking their fingers on reflex. Most of them learn to stop doing that after a while. I've only ever had to deal with one gnome in my life, and uh, that was uh, that was back in Mithril Hall. My clan is, uh, well, we don't take kindly to thieves, and the justice system in Mithril Hall is, well, it's a, it's a bit more about public humili- humiliation than it is about, you know, dealing out harm. So I've heard that's why I always left there rather quickly. Well, on certain occasions. Hey, we've all done things that were not exactly in the, within the spirit of the law. Part of being an adventurer that sometimes to do the right thing, you have to break a rule and hope no one notices. Or hope you have enough blackmail on the person who does. I haven't told an errand in my life. It's taught me that the most effective way to get around the more unjust laws, typically having an a escape plan ready well in advance. Of course, you always have to have an escape plan or three for wherever you go. Especially when you have certain people who are not particularly happy with you. And those people have friends. Thankfully, they have 
short memories that can be made shorter with a little bit of gold or something really, really sharp in the spine. Yeah. After uh, after the dragon attack in Waterdeep, we we came across a paladin. First one I'd ever met, actually. Name of Arterius. Arterius Finken Capradon is a weird guy. He's a he's blue. Quite the name. Aye, right? Apparently it was some traditional dragonborn some or another. He's... Ah, dragonborn. That explains it. They're interesting folk. Terrible at poker. He had a he had a stick shoved up somewhere that was longer than than the arm. It was, it took quite a lot to get him to unwind. Of the alcohol, I'm assuming. Oddly enough, wouldn't touch the stuff. From my experience, it's usually best when they do not. And dragonborns are fun to deal with and have a really bad habit of setting your ship on fire. After seeing what happened to the lady that he was charged with protecting. And I'm using Lady uh, rather liberally. She was, uh... Well, it turns out that Waterdeep has a bit of a, um... Dragon infestation. Uh, Lady Sylvia, she, um... She were a silver dragon. Fully grown. Hiding as a, uh, as an elf. Oh, that's something you don't run across every day. Yeah, my little family has a bad habit of running across the rare and unusual, and usually the rare and unusual is trying to kill us. Fortunately, not this time. Lady Sylvia, she, um, she, she's alright. She's a good lass. Don't ever get her drunk, though. She has no idea how to control herself when she's been drinking, and she cannot hold her ale at all. I did. Uh, if I ever run across her, I will make sure that it is all water. If you happen to see a... F- Rather tall, rather beautiful elf with a love-struck blue dragonborn in full plate armor running behind her. That's her. You know, now that I mention it, I might have crossed paths with them along the roads. I don't remember where they were going. Now I'm kind of wishing I'd followed them. I wouldn't have run into those bandits that broke my stuff, which is why I'm trying to find the blacksmith. What are you trying to get repaired or smithed? It's just, it's a few items I was tr- transporting for the friends, um... I don't even remember it. It's, like, components for the building thing. It's... It was a few pieces. I... They didn't tell me what this was for. I just remembered what it's supposed to look like, and some of them are... dented, and I'm in a bit of a rush. I don't have time to fix it, and... Ugh. Gotta love Highwaymen. Before she's in fire from here, I... If you don't mind, I'll take a look at it. If I can't fix it, I know I definitely know someone in this city that will. Very helpful, because if I'm too late with this thing, my friend is going to have a bit of a problem, and I use the word friend very loosely. So, you mostly live in Neverwinter, right? I used to live in Neverwinter. Um, right now, I'm still technically indebted to the Temple of the Forge in Mithril Hall. So I'm going from city to city with me adopted family to try and avoid the the high priest there, because I don't particularly want to go back. I've been there before. What's this high priest's name? That'd be Forge Father Stonejaw. Stonejaw. I ever remember this name for if I ever pass by there sometime. What what do you have left on your debt? I have about. 9,000 gold left in me debt. That's quite a lot of gold. Did they expect it all at once? No, no. The original plan was that I was going to be working in the Temple of the Forge for as long as it took to perform 10,000 gold worth of weddings, funerals, marriage, other miscellaneous cleric business. Dear God, that sounds terrible. It's not that bad. It really isn't. The problem was that, well, I've, I've, Tom and Aaron, they, they have a really self-destructive tendency. They're, they're, they're good kids. They really are. The most loving pair that you'd ever meet. And they just, and, and Aaron's, and Oslog and Lily and Vaughn and everyone else that we've accepted into our little family, they're, they're all, Great warriors and wonderful people, but knowing... You need a little help sometimes. That they do. That they do. Especially 
Especially when it comes to dealing with themselves. Sometimes you are your own worst enemy. They blame themselves for so much that's not in their control. And it just... I know they're not blood. I know they're not me biological kids. But they neither one of them had a father growing up. And I just... I, I feel responsible for both of them. I love them so much. And I just want them to be happy. I couldn't do that from the forge. I couldn't do that from the temple. I needed to be by their side. I needed to protect them. Sure, even the Forge Father could come to accept that. Well, Forge Father Stonejaw and I don't see eye to eye in a lot of things. He's 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 trying to get it into our uh, he's trying to get it etched onto our stone tablets that we should take vows of celibacy and we should cast away our clans and our family for the Forge Father is the only clan that we'll ever need and. He's such a pretentious little douche. Ugh, they already don't like him. But, unfortunately, he's the only hes the only priest in all of Mithra Hall that outranks me, and I have to answer to him, which is why I ran. I can completely understand that. This, this may be a weird question, but were you in Neverwinter when there was that, all that nonsense going on with the Cult of Dragons? Oh, I, uh... We were in Neverwinter when the Cult of Dragons hit, and we were paying a visit to the Cardinal Acquisitions Guild Hall. Um, apparently, they took Erin in after she ran away from the warband that were that was enslaving her. Familiar with them? They're good people, mostly. Oh, I, I, very good people. If you, if you ever, if you ever find yourself in that hall again, find Dragolite. He's um. Older fella, long-ish, shoulder-length, gray hair, I, as you can see. I'm bald, so anyone with hair is a little bit longer than mine. Human fella talks with a weird Barovian accent. Tell him that Sindri sent you his way. Tell him that I said to give you a free drink. And tell him that if he gives you any flack, you'll tell Roxy that I told her to give you a free drink, and she'll set him straight. I have to remember that. I, I've been there several times. I think I've seen him, but I've never actually spoken to him before. Usually been meeting with other people about other things. Sometimes I do favors for them when people get in trouble. Hey, Dracoli can be a little flighty. He still goes on missions every once in a while, but it's usually like world ending high level stuff. I'm about to the same place. I used to venture all over, now I mostly just wander around, see what true stories are, and keep an eye out to make sure that the world doesn't end. Because that would be really, really frustrating. Hey, that's uh, that's an all familiar, that's an all too familiar tale too. We've um, our little family. We um, we're actually on going to be on our way to Luskin tomorrow to see if we can catch a boat over to some island in the middle of the trackless sea. Apparently, Bahamut has been uh, rather vocal and talking to my daughter about some kind of seal prison something for that five-headed evil what's her name? Tiamat? That one, Tiamat. Uh, something about her breaking free of her prison and uh, the, some, the the dragon that attacked Eren in Waterdeep is working with the cult of the dragon and it's, it's gonna be a long day when that day comes. That's very disturbing news. The devil word with some of my friends that are followers of Bahamut, and why they haven't told me about this. Well, uh, apparently it has something to do with this golden dragon egg that we found while we were on our way to Waterdeep the, the first time. You found a golden dragon egg? Hey, hatched it too. Cute little sucker. Do you have a pet dragon? Well, Erin has a dragon daughter. She's not too fond of the idea that it's a pet. I respect that, and I correct my statement. Pets are a bit demeaning for dragons. But aye, we have a golden dragon in our little family, and uh, she's she's growing at a rather alarming rate. It's normal for dragons. Yeah, but apparently she's the key to keeping everything as it's supposed to be or something. That's what he was talking about. Okay, that, that makes sense now. So, when do you leave? Well, we are supposed to be leaving first thing in the morning, and uh, 
We've got a little bit of daylight left, and like I said, I'd be more than willing to take a look at those things that you need prepared, but it's, uh... I believe it's more important that you focus on what is to come. That's going to be no easy feat. Aye. And if, if what I've gathered from Aaron's silence is the truth of things, then this is going to be a rather difficult task for more than one reason. Apparently this blue dragon, uh, had ties with the Broken Fang warband and closest thing that Eren has had to a mother. Oh, that shall be difficult indeed. I, like I said, I couldn't stand by in the in the temple while her and Tom and Vaughn and everyone ran off to face this threat. I had to, I had to be there to protect them. I don't know how anyone could stand by this. Tiamat being bit released could be very bad for this world. Very bad. The reason Tiamat is imprisoned. I never thought you'd get out. Aye. Um, let us not worry too much about that. You've made it this far. But uh, hopefully you'll make it even farther and next time we happen across each other. You can tell me of how you saved the world. I'll be looking forward to that. I think uh, I think next time we run into each other, I might just have might just have Tom with me. Maybe he'll be able to spin you a yarn or two. I would very much enjoy that. For now, let's get a drink and talk something a little less serious. That sounds like the best idea I've heard in about a week. Why don't I take you over to the Cardinal Acquisitions Hall? Then it's free there for, for members. I'm aware. It's where I usually go. I just... I don't know. I felt like stopping by here. See if I ran into anyone interesting. It's a good thing I did. Well, I'm glad that you considered me interesting. You're a very interesting person, and just don't believe anyone else would have been able to let me know about the possibility of Tiamat reawakening. I knew we should have done a better seal. But yeah, l- let's go get drinks. Tales of Adventure is written, directed, and produced by me, Brianna Toiber, as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network. The music is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To see more of his work, visit his website at chesterstudios.net. Find out more about Pseudonym Social by visiting our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. If you like what I'm doing and would like to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial and choose one of the tiers connected to Tales of Adventure.